Hi, flamingos. Hey, so we are going to do our second box on the cover of our invention blueprints. And again, these are in the front of Lupine Lane, this booklet for you to pick up, okay? We made a bunch of these for you so you could have them to work on at home with these videos. Uh, so these are your invention blueprints. Our second box on the cover of your blueprints is going to be for the architect. And the architect is the designer. They come up with what the invention is going to look like, or they also come up with what a house or a building is going to look like. Uh, that's the job of an architect. And an architect, they, they're very creative people. They use mainly the right side of their brain. They draw and they use really cool matte pencils to make really careful drawings called renderings. And we're gonna do that too. Uh, so we're going to, first we're going to read this book called Iggy Peck Architect, and we're going to learn a little bit more about what architects do. Iggy Peck Architect, and, and this book is by a lady named Andrea Beatty, and she's written lots and lots of really cool books, um, and we're going to read more of her books uh, to go along with our invention topic study here. So let's read about Iggy Peck. You notice he's got lots of tools. He's got rulers, right, for measuring. He has pencils, he has measuring tape, and this, this paper, in the, it has little squares all in the background, and uh, they're great. They, it's, a, it's graph paper, and it allows him to draw things uh, to, to very evenly by using this graph paper. <clears throat> Young Iggy Peck is an architect. And he has been since he was two, when he built a great tower in only an hour with nothing but diapers and glue. Good gracious, Ignatius, his mother exclaimed. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But her smile faded fast as a light wind blew past and she realized those diapers weren't clean. Ignatius, my son, what on earth have you done? That's disgusting and nasty, it stinks. But Iggy was gone, and he was out on the lawn using dirt clods to build a great sphinx. Oh, look at the sphinx. So cool. When Iggy was three, his parents could see his unusual passion would stay. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples and temples from modeling clay. Wow. Look, he's building everything he can. If you have magnet tiles or blocks at home, you can build, and you can also build with all these really cool things, right? Lots of different things can be used to build. At dinner one night, to his father's delight, Iggy got a bright gleam in his eye. And out on the porch, he built the St. Louis Arch from pancakes and coconut pie. Yum. Dear Egg had it made until second grade when his teacher was Miss Lila Greer. On the very first day, she had this to say. We do not talk of buildings in here. Gothic or Romanesque, I couldn't care less about buildings ancient or new. She said in her lecture about architecture that it had no place in grade two. Mm, I think she's gonna learn otherwise. Well, that might seem severe, but she was so sincere when she, had, she was no more than seven. She had had a great fright at a dizzying height in a building so tall it scraped heaven. On an architect's tour of the 95th floor, young Lila got lost from her group. She was found two days later stuck in an elevator eating cheese with a French circus troupe. After that day, it's quite safe to say, she thought all building lovers were nuts. As a teacher, she taught that above all one ought to avoid them, no ifs, ands, or buts. Look at her with the circus troupe in the elevator. Oh my, she was stuck. That would be scary. <laughs> As you might guess, it would cause Iggy stress to hear of such terrible talk. But he didn't bear. He sat in the rear while building a castle of chalk. You, Iggy Peck, your desk is a wreck. Tear down that castle right now. You will not build in here. Is that perfectly clear? Do you need to see Principal Howe? Look, he's afraid. <laughs> he's in trouble. No, ma'am, said Iggy. 
and he lowered his head and his heart sank down to the floor. With no chance to build, his interest was killed. Now second grade was such a bore. After 12 long days that passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Greer took the class to Brulu River Pass for a hike and an old-fashioned picnic. They crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of a burbling stream. But they no sooner passed than the footbridge collapsed and Miss Lila Greer started to scream. <gasps> We're trapped here, oh my, a last kid's goodbye. Her eyeballs rolled back into her head. She dropped to the ground with a vague groaning sound, luckily fainted, not dead. The class was amazed and they stood there quite dazed, uncertain of what they should do. But one bright young man was off hatching a plan which started with Miss Lila's shoe. Soon each lad and lass there at Blue River Pass were working together as one. And when she came to, Miss Lila Greer knew that something quite brave had been done. She looked in the air and she saw hanging there a structure with cables and braces. And on the far side, beaming with pride, were 17 smiling young faces. Boots, tree roots, and strings, fruit roll-ups and things, some of which one should not mention, were stretched ridge to ridge in a glorious bridge dangling from shoestring suspension. Do you remember that Benjamin Franklin came up with the idea of a single span bridge? Nothing is holding it up in between each piece of land, and that was Benjamin Franklin's uh, idea. It all became clear to Miss Lila Greer as she crossed that bridge over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than to spend your time building a dream. Now every week at Blue River Creek Elementary in the second grade, all the school kids can hear, along with Miss Greer, how the world's greatest buildings were made. The weekly guest speaker, in his t-shirt and sneakers, talks of buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course he's the guy who builds towers from pie, that brilliant young man, Iggy Peck. Cool, so Iggy Peck is an architect and he's a designer of buildings. We are going to be the architect or the designer for our invention. And so we're going to fill that in in our second box on our blueprints. Uh, so let's do that here. Let's write the word, and this is going to go in the second box, right under your inventor box right here, right? We're going to write architect, okay? So architect, ah, 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 er, 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 R, and then we're gonna do k, k, k. So usually when you have a C and an H together, it produces this sound. They produce this sound, ch, ch, ch. But for this word, it's going to make a hark. So arc, C, H, I, 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 T, 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 And then we're going to do those two dots right here. We're going to put the colon. That's called a colon, right? We've put that on some of our work before. And then we're going to write our first and our last name. So Jack Alvarado is going to write Jack Alvarado. And Jack Mosier is going to write Jack Mosier. And who else? Who else? How about Stella Bender is going to write Stella Bender. But I am going to write my name, and it's going to say Lauren Foyle. And you can use different colors if you want, just like we do with all of our Sharpies at school. You can use different colored markers or different colored pencils. Just make sure you write architect Lauren Boyle and you put this in your, your second box on the cover of your blueprints. Okay, we're going to fill in the third box next and it's going to be uh, the engineer box.